Hello everyone, artist Charles Wolf here, back again for another painting lesson. I'm going to create a beautiful little landscape, a river scene, today. I have a lot of colors there on my palette, but I'm not going to be using all of them. I initially had a different conception in my head for this piece, but what it turned out to be was a little less colorful and a little bit more streamlined in the palette choices. So you won't need all the colors that you see there on the palette. The colors that you do need are as follows, cobalt blue, cadmium yellow, titanium white, and Mars black. I may use a touch of the aqua green later on, but for the most part, you really just need those four colors to make this piece work. I'm starting today with a mixture of cobalt blue and titanium white, using a round brush to apply the layers adding a bit of the white and the gray to the blue to soften it and mute the color. Working very quickly so that the paint doesn't dry on me, acrylic paint dries very quickly, and so you need to work fast when you are doing this. You can see that I've already sketched out very loosely this piece on the canvas board. I'm working on a 9 by 12 inch canvas board today. Adding more white as I get closer to the horizon. Touch a blue there, bring back the color. Very dirty brush, kind of a dingy white due to the touch of black that I added earlier. I'm not cleaning my brush off between the layers. I'm simply going back in for more color. Touch more blue at the top. Using quick horizontal brushwork. To make some grays, quite easy, just mix your white and a touch of the black. Little dabs we'll do here as we are making some dark clouds, kind of stormy. Reaching down all the way to the horizon. And whatever we do above, we need to make sure that we reflect a little bit in the water. So I'm going to toss some of this gray down here, a touch of the white to lighten it up where I've marked my river. More of my gray mix. Good amount of the white there. As you can see, I'm not being very careful, just tossing it in. We can neaten things up and straighten edges as we go. Oops. Put the canvas back and keep going. These 9 by 12 inch canvas boards are great for practicing. If you're starting out painting for the very first time, I highly recommend that you try them. They're awesome in that they can be framed with a normal picture frame. I recommend the 8 by 10 inch size. It's easier to frame that. 9 by 12 is harder to find, or picture frames that is. But if you get the 8x10 inch, very common size for photos, and so you can very easily frame these canvas boards with a photo frame. Bringing back in the blue here, some of the white. A little too intense, we'll lighten that up again with the white touch of the gray there and just blending everything together. Touch more of the blue. And blending.
Looks like I've switched to a smaller angle brush. And then back to my round brush, darker gray mix. I've connected the gray mix all the way to the left hand side, right above the horizon line to make these storm front clouds rolling over here on the left. My camera cut out unfortunately for a minute there, and so you missed a little bit of the painting, but it's the same process, horizontal strokes to create those clouds going all the way across the horizon line to the left. Bringing in some titanium light here. Being very active with my brushwork. And we'll reflect more of the sky with some white in the water below. It's kind of a silvery gray tone, but there's a touch of blue in it as well. Make sure that you get a little bit of that blue there to make this read more like water. This painting reminds me of an overlook that I recently hiked to here in North Carolina. There's a rushing, curving river down below, and there's trees on each side. Don't recall the name of the river, but it doesn't matter. I've seen lots of things like this here in North Carolina with the rolling hills, and so it's nice to capture some of the beauty of this wonderful landscape. It's important to get your river to form a triangle and the two sides should be becoming more and more narrow as they get to the horizon line. It's going to help you get your perspective and create a great amount of depth. So have the two lines converging on a single point in the distance. And if you do this, you'll get a wonderful flattening river coming towards you. As things get closer to you, they get bigger, so we need to make sure that the river widens at the bottom of the canvas and the two points converge at the top. Bringing in some of the dawn here, here is a mixture of cadmium yellow and titanium white. Beautiful touches of yellow, kind of a creamy color as the sun is starting to break over the clouds. So lovely. Back to my gray mix, just continuing to work on these clouds, get them to lay and read the way I want. And back to my lighter mix with the yellow. Whatever you do in the sky, you need to do in the water, which is a reflection of that sky. We're going to put this yellow in the far back, sort of dwindling here in the front.
more intense right there near the horizon. More gray mix up here, just fill this in a little more. Add a few more dark clouds. And we'll go back into the cadmium yellow and the titanium white with a filbert brush, kind of a rounded U-shape bristles on that brush. I want to make the sunrise a little more intense. More white, allowed the paint to dry, and now I can layer over other paint, and it won't blend now because the paint underneath is dry, and it just creates a wonderful richness to this and really increases the intensity. I actually waited for it to dry naturally, but you could hurry it along with a hair dryer, and if you're painting along with me today, that's what you should do. Blending here, more of this yellow splayed across the water. It's a little too intense at the bottom. We'll take off some of the excess with a paper towel, kind of grind it in, and it will look better. There we go. Lots of white, lots of yellow, really intense right here in the distance. Little more gray mix. Let's make some green. Titanium white, Mars black, cobalt blue, aqua green, and cadmium yellow. Basically mixing everything together, this will make a muted green. Need lots of yellow to counterbalance the black and the blue. This is a very dark mix on purpose. The light is in the background, which means anything that's close to us, the foreground, should be darker. Things that are farther away, closer to the light source, the sun rising, should be much lighter. We want to make sure we have lots of blue in this foreground clump of trees. I'm going to keep this very loose and impressionistic. Adding a little bit more of the lighter white and blue mixture to lighten it up. And we'll take that green mix and put it in the background. We're going to add more blue to this as the hills in the far distance should be pushing into the blue family due to the oxygen in the air. As things are farther away from us, they get more of a bluish cast in nature. So for this to look realistic, we need to make sure that we are reflecting that in our painting. And to that point, here is a bit more blue.
Note that I'm keeping everything very loose. I'm not worrying about creating a lot of the little details. We're just putting in the impression of this landscape and the rest will follow. The viewer's eye can do a lot of work for you. Don't need to worry about making every little twig and blade of grass and all of that. Get the form, get the colors right, and the rest will take care of itself. I'm not a detailed artist. I don't like painting details. I like to create a beautiful artistic impression of what I see in the world. Painting detailed paintings are a lot of fun, but they take so much time. And today I'm just trying to create a beautiful piece of art for you all relatively quickly so you can follow along and paint too. Lots of yellow here. I really love the color palette that I'm using today. Lots of blues and grays and these greens. They look like pastels, so lovely and so much fun to work with. More yellow, blue, and white. Keep adding to our same mixture. We'll do a lot of adjusting as we go along. There's more white there because this is all farther away from us. And we'll blend up into the blue of the mountains. More of the cadmium yellow. Let's darken this back up with some Mars black. And we'll just dab in some trees here. Again, things should be darker, closer they are to us, because the light source is in the back. Cast everything in shadow, that's closer to us. darker green mix and just blending right down to the waterline, jostling my filbert brush back and forth. Touch more blue, a little more of the white. Filling in the canvas that's exposed and mixing it up. blue and we'll start to work on the right hand side as well. Touch of white here. I end up blending this out. You can skip this step if you want. Didn't like the way it looked so we're going to undo some of this. Decided to go for a much more blended smooth effect on this side, not so detailed. Really wanted to push the focus on the sky and the river and the background and simplify the foreground so the viewer's eye sees it but then continues forward. If there's too much detail all over equally, then the viewer's eye doesn't have anywhere to go. The idea is that you start by looking at the right hand side of the painting, move your eyes upwards, follow the river to its natural course, and then shoot up to the left and see the mountains. That's what I'm thinking for the way the viewer should see this piece. That's the flow of it. More blue, yellow, and black to the green mix. A 
much darker on the right hand side of this river. I'm jostling that brush up and down, quick strokes to create these trees. Bigger strokes down over here. More of a lighter blue mix. Let's bring out the yellow tones more strongly. Always wanting to be adjusting my colors, adjust the blend as you go, helps to create more variety. And if you do this each time you reload your brush, you're going to have a lot more interest formed very easily without really changing the brush stroke style. It adds so much more complexity and all you're really doing is shifting it darker and then lighter. It's the play of the two axes, the light versus the dark, that makes the painting work. You can't see the light without the dark and vice versa. You really need some darker areas for the lighter areas to really shine and be bold. to bring in the yellow as sort of the highlights and the blue will recede and we can use that to our advantage as we paint along today. Dirty brush, bringing in lots of the white and the yellow. space with the horizontal movement. Decided I didn't like the way this was looking, so I'm going to change it. But for now, we can put the color in and then play some darker colors against it. We're bringing out some highlights over here on the left. Back to our dark green mix, more blue there. Just gonna break up this river bank over here on the far side of the river. A little bit lighter. start to reflect down into the water. A little more blue, darken these up. You really want the reflections to reach far down on the left hand side and become smaller as they go up river. This will be more realistic looking. Dark green mix again.
a little bit darker with some darker black here. It's a bit too much. We're going to fix that right now. Making some more of my mixture. Covering up some of that black. Got a little bit too bold. And we'll dance some of this mid-tone green on the nearer bank as well. Touch of yellow there. Adding some more blue to my mixture. Bit of black. really bring in the dark here, lots of black, cover up the bottom corner of this canvas, push it back in space. More of the yellow and the white. Back to my mid-tone color. Always important to vary your colors, and that's what I'm doing right here. Lots of blue. Really trying to cool this off, push it back into space, make it darker, fill in my canvas, great shadow color. The sun hasn't reached this part of the forest yet, so we shouldn't have too much of the lighter colors we need to be darker down here at the bottom for this to read correctly. Vertical strokes, filbert brush, small. Grab a touch of this white yellow mix. It's a little bit too intense. Gonna blend, create some mist through these trees.
Just more of the gray mix. Final steps. You need to bring in more of the clouds reflected into the water. I'm going to bring some gray on the right hand side of the river. We don't want halos, so be careful about blending the gray around your trees. A little bit darker. Make sure that you fill it in, all the lighter blue, right up to the edge of those trees. Back to my clean filbert brush. Here's some white yellow mixture. A little bit lighter, a little more intense at the top here. And we're going to again increase the intensity of this dawn in the clouds above. Touch of blue. Just gonna blend this together a little bit better. It's a little too detailed. I'm gonna make it match stylistically a little more. Almost done with this one. bit more black. Again with the gray mix and the round brush, I'm just going to finish filling in the lighter blue sections with the darker color of the clouds. Back to my white blue mix. Bring in this lighter color, blend together a bit better. A little more light green. mid-tone. A little darker. I 
And there's the final piece. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.